Welcome to Vacuum Wars. In this video, we developed all new tests to try to figure out which one of these new types of robot vacuums that have front-mounted obstacle avoidance sensors and or artificial intelligence was the best. But first, I think it's best that we go over a brief history of robot vacuum sensors so that we can better understand all the results. So links in the description to everything I'll mention, and let's get started. In the beginning, robot vacuums had a pretty basic sensor suite. They had a bump sensor, which told them when they encountered heavy objects of a certain height, like furniture. They would also often have infrared sensors, usually on the front of the robot, though they're typically hidden behind the front plate. These sense walls, so they don't have to scuff them up with their bump sensors. They also had cliff sensors, also infrared, mounted on the bottom of the robot, which would keep it from falling downstairs. These three together are a pretty good combination of sensors, and even today, almost 20 years later, almost all budget robot bags vacuums use this same setup. Around 2015, premium robot vacuums started showing up with either a top-mounted camera system called V-SLAM or a top-mounted spinning laser called LiDAR. These new sensors allowed robots to create a map of your house so that they could navigate in a systematic, precise way instead of the more or less random way that they navigated before this. This was a big deal, and today any robot vacuum over a certain price will probably have either a V-SLAM or LiDAR system for its so-called smart navigation. Despite all these new sensors, all robot vacuums were still blind to certain kinds of objects in their path. Objects that were too low for their LiDAR or infrared sensors to detect, or too light for its bump sensors to detect. For example, you can see in these night vision shots that LiDAR sensors typically scan about four inches off the floor with a horizontal line. So anything below that line is essentially invisible. Or if they had V-SLAM, the cameras are either pointed directly at the ceiling or at the ceiling but at an angle, so no help for low objects there either. About two years ago, robot vacuums started showing up with new sensors on the front of the robot. Typically, at least one camera would be involved. The idea is that the robot could now see the objects in front of them and avoid them. They would be programmed from the factory with a library of objects to avoid. For instance, iRobot made a huge number of models of pet waste to upload to their JC. This image library can be updated with new objects with various firmware updates. Many companies also suggest that their robots can learn about new objects on their own with their AI. Some companies tried two cameras to give it more depth perception. Some added lasers, usually on the sides of the camera and crossed just in front of the robot, that are oriented vertically, as you can see in these images. Recently, things like structured light sensors have been added to give it the ability to see in 3D. At this at this point, just about every manufacturer does obstacle avoidance a bit differently if they do it at all. In the past two years, Vacuum Wars has reviewed about 10 or so of these AI obstacle avoidance robot vacuums, and we developed some very basic tests, but I could never really gauge how much better or worse one of them was over another, mostly because they all seemed to be kind of hit or miss. Sometimes they avoided an object perfectly, and sometimes it didn't. It was hard to find much rhyme or reason in those results, which brings us to the point of this video. The first test was the six standard objects test. These are objects that I would think most of them should have programmed in their image library if they have one. Things like cords and pet waste. I used the same pattern for the exclusive pet waste test as well as the cones test, which I've come to understand as being less about obstacle avoidance and more about their general aggressiveness, but more on that later. We also set up a seven object torture test with items that were not likely to have been programmed into their library. We also put them in a different pattern and added some complexity, like putting the object on a rug of the same color. Another test was brought about because recently I've noticed that these robots often miss objects on rugs with complicated patterns, like this rug in my living room, but they avoid the same object on less complicated surfaces. So to test this, I used three blue objects on a blue carpet with a complicated pattern. I also did a timed test, where after having the robot map the studio room without obstacles, I ran it with three new obstacles and noted how quickly it finished its cleaning job. Basically, it was a way to determine their root efficiency while avoiding obstacles. With the six objects test, the Samsung JetBot AI and the Roborock S7 Max V tied for first place with a perfect score, with the Roomba J7 coming in second. With the novelty pet waste test, there were a lot more perfect scores, but it's one area where the robots without a camera and only lasers did not do well, like the DreamBot Z10 
Ben and the Shark. With the blue obstacle test, the Samsung JetBot AI and the Roomba J7 got perfect scores, whereas the Roborock S7 Max V and the Echovax T8 AIVI tied for second place. One of the hardest tests was the torture test, where there were no perfect scores, but the Samsung JetBot AI got the closest, followed by the Roborock S7 Max V, the DreamBot Z10, and the Roomba J7. With a timed test, I found that the Echovax products were on average much faster than the competition, with the Echovax Omni leading the way. So which one of these has the best obstacle avoidance system based on all this criteria? The answer is the Samsung JetBot AI, followed by the Roborock S7 Max V and the Roomba J7 in third place. But that's not the whole story, because there is much more to a robot vacuum than just this one feature. And while the Samsung JetBot AI clearly had the best AI obstacle avoidance, it did score the lowest in our general performance tests, and it doesn't have great reviews online either. So I took some basic criteria like their price, their scores on things like the crevice pickup test, and the carpet deep clean test. I took into account if they have certain key features like an auto empty dock or a mop attachment, and I gave them a score which I added to their obstacle avoidance scores to come up with my best overall and best budget pick. My best overall pick was the Roborock S7 Max V. It was always near the top with the obstacle avoidance tests and its performance metrics and features, including its new Ultra Dock, which washes and refills the mop tank, make it the best overall choice, but at a pretty significant price tag. The budget pick is the DreamBot Z10. It's the cheapest on the list besides the Shark, and it was really good in all the tests, with the exception of the pet waste test, but it had excellent performance scores as well, and it has an auto empty bin and a mop. For me, I think the takeaway is that none of these systems are perfect yet, and you really shouldn't expect them to be, but they are getting much better every single day, and at least now I have some criteria developed to better tell exactly how good or bad they are. Links in the description, and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave. Thanks for watching.